is a long way from his days announcing the lunch menu to the rest of his high school class. <laughs> which is how, how far I've come from announcing cheeseburgers announcing and lunch the menu. To, to announcing Chris Sims' top five <laughs> safety <laughs> rankings. Man, you've come a long way. Yes. You really have. I mean, you host the Derby, so what? You host Chris Sims <laughs> on Button. Wow. I mean, the hell with your damn cheeseburgers and announcing that. And, I mean, you're just the hardest working man in sports right now. Doing it now you came back here to do this damn show. Mm-hmm. What a good friend you are. What well. a good, like, you're just a professional. Right out of California, Saturday evening. Yep. I tuned in. Yeah. My Aunt Wendy, you know, she's all about the horse racing in general. Plus, she likes you. Sure. Right? And she doesn't see straight. She thinks you're handsome. So we're still <laughs> trying to check her eyes. But so I tune in. What a race it was. It was a good race. But thanks for coming back, man. Well, I did it from here in studio. So oh, we you were did not you really? there in California. Yeah. yeah. I we tricked not, you. We got you. you. We got totally him, everyone. tricked me. We got him, everyone. Yeah. I never saw you. Yeah. So I kept hearing you. And I, I thought, telling them put put us on camera more they got to make sure we're not lying to the audience that we're out there but yeah we did that from studio we did okay. used to go out there for yeah, a number of years I thought so uh but yeah the the travel budget i think we've we've reduced it a little bit so we can send this desk to combine in super bowl week so we <laughs> this is back. what makes every you can't go to california the desk has to go to indianapolis okay it's all we can afford here at nbc yeah. right now no i am getting pumped i'm getting pumped for the derby you know horse racing in, in the you know the, the national eye certainly it's like kentucky uh, kentucky derby you got the preakness and that's you know triple yeah, crown right. that's about it maybe breeders cup get some more of the, the diehards yeah. but it's a it's a fun fun event it's just like it's there are so many resources that go into it it's just like all of our on-air people except for chris sims they give you that one off somehow are, are involved in it so i am looking forward to it but yeah it's cool it, it did not take away from the time that i got to look at the film of defensive tackles wow in you got to look football. at big horses asses <laughs> and now you got to look at big humans asses great call right a lot I of mean, similarities a lot of similarities there right need some big clydesdales down there in the middle yeah got to have those big horses there stop the run game you know push the pocket in the pass game another good group um that we're going to break it down today i mean really is i mean I, as i get down here and you know I, I got a few position groups i'm still not all the way up on here right but as I look at it and just go, okay, I think I got the main position groups down that everybody looks at to go, like, this is the, the, the groups this year. Quarterback, wide receiver, right. offensive line. Right. Defensive tackle now. Add that to it. Right. We, gotta, we talked about DBs. There'll be a few, certainly a yeah. part of the conversation. Right. But, but man, wow. Defensive linemen, offensive linemen, it really looks like it's a first round that's setting up to be – like like that. Other thing that jumps out to me as I get a better hold of this, and you know, again, like I, I haven't watched Brock Bowers and studied him yet. Yeah. You know, I don't think there's any running backs in the first round. There's no linebackers or safeties. I think that are in the first round conversation. So I feel like I probably have seen most of the people that are in that first round combo up to this point. You know, I do look at it and go linemen, like extraordinaire. And I also look at it and just through that lens of like the big picture first round, right? Where I go, I, I, I'm not so sure. I keep seeing all these mock drafts with like, you know, five and six receivers going in the first round. I keep coming away with it the more I watch going, mm. the main four are going in the first round. I wouldn't be sold that any of the other main four are going in the first round. I wouldn't, you know, like we, like we talked about. You know, neighbors, the two LSU kids, Odunze and Harrison Jr., they stand alone in the receiver group. There's a little bit of a drop-off after that, right? You know I love Roman Wilson, somebody I don't think he's a first-round talent, right? I think he's a top of the second, mid-second, somewhere in there, probably realistically. Yeah. Right? But I see some other names thrown out there as first round, and that's the ones where I go, ooh, I think as we get into real football and the draft comes around, teams going to go, wait, there's t- 10 other receivers that are this close together. Exactly. I'll wait to the second round. We need this de-tackle right now because it falls off a cliff after another two are gone here, and we can't take that chance. And, and that's where I think we're well, going to we, see. We've been saying that for, yeah. for a little while here. Yeah. You think the elite, now elite guys are going to be going and yes. you know, they're still going to get paid. Yes. But it, like you mentioned, it, it has to be this way because more players are playing receiver seven on seven, all these different factors that are that are involved here. And so now, yeah, if, if you're one of that second tier of players, you're going to be like a running back at yeah. a certain point, it seems like. You well, know, it's just like teams yeah. will wait and say, we'll just take whichever one kind of falls to us. Exactly right. Um, I, I think so. Because you just, like you said, the numbers, how good they are, there's going to be a group every year where you go, okay, one, two, and three, four are good. But yeah. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten have like a grade that's like point oh one off each other, right? Or it's like the exact same grade, except what do you like this guy? He's tall or this one's shorter, right? We have them the same grade. So that's where, again, to your point there, I, I, I you know, I'll be interested to see how that plays out draft. And I wouldn't even be surprised if those elite, elite guys fall a little bit more in the draft. I than wouldn't we be shocked either. Because you've wouldn't. heard Marvin Harrison, some people say is the best player in the draft. Yeah. Some people say it's slam dunk number four. I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah, no, I think there's. I, I don't know about that either. I, I, you know, I, I do think him and him and neighbors will be the top two receivers off the draft. Yeah, and then it's just where do the other two go? Thomas and Adunze. All right, so we're getting a little off track, but not really because it's these big guys that are causing you to have that thought. Yeah. Defensive tackle today, you got your top five. Then we'll have some others receiving votes after that. Um, let's start off with a question. Ante Durie says, yo, Chris and Ahmed, big fan of the pod. Been listening for almost three years. How have your defensive tackle evaluations changed over the last few years? It seems like the position requires more versatility. There are more viable body types than ever at the position, or am I completely wrong? No, no, you're not wrong. There's, there's more body types, versatility, depth at that position. It's part of the reason we just talked about a little bit there with the offensive line value. There's just more good defense alignment coming out in the draft every year than there are NFL offense alignment. You know, we see teams, they lose an offense alignment. We go, oh my gosh, you know, oh, they're in trouble. They lost an offense alignment. They don't have their starting five. We go that defense alignment. We go, oh, they missed this guy. Oh, they'll put in the other guy. He's, he's a freak too. Like, I mean, it's just, it's not as hard to find that depth and what we're finding there, let alone, uh, yeah, there's a I think the versatility of defenses and that 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 has gone up so much where you know I know we have the team that plays Seattle scheme and still all of that but then you take the rest of the NFL like defenses are multiple now right mm-hmm. they want a guy that's like wait I, I need on, on this situation he needs to play D tackle but two plays later from now I need him to play D end he's got to be able to do both and then, you know, when I put him back at D-tackle, I actually need him to do two different types of D-tackle. I'd like him to be able to do, like, two-gap, and he can hold somebody up. And then I'd like him to be super explosive and shoot a gap and to be disruptive and f*** the play up every now and then, right? So I think there's all of that that goes into this. And because, you know, I think football has become so much more situational and specific that, yeah, there's a little bit more, you know, coloring outside the canvas as far as what we think of a D tackles anymore, right? Where yeah. it's like, and when we grew up, it was just like, whoever's the biggest, strongest, immovable guy, you put him a D tackle. Now it's not always about that. Some teams go, eh, I'm not worried about my guy. If he gets double teamed and they move him, so what? You know, the next play, he's going to shoot this gap, get skinny, and, try and make a tackle for a five yard loss, right? So there's different things that people are looking for. There's different skill sets along that defensive line. Yeah. I don't know. If I've, I think I think I don't know if I've changed my evaluations to get specifically about the question a whole lot. You know, I I feel like I've learned more, and I think it's a, a position where we talked before the pod. You, you need to know the position and a little nuance. You got to have a little backlog of history to go. You know, a good defensive tackle game sometimes could be like he made no plays. Yeah. He didn't do anything, right? He busted back in the line of scrimmage a few times, made the running back move, made the quarterback miss move off a spot, right? But a lot of the times if you look like at a game and go, oh, there's 60 snaps, and oh, this guy had 10, 12 good plays, that's like you played awesome at D-tackle. And a good play may be just standing up to a double team and not losing Not ground. moving, and the running back <laughs> yeah. just runs into the pile, and now yeah. he has nowhere to go, and everybody tackles him. But exactly right. Yeah. You know, so I think that's what you got to look for. And then the biggest thing to is like we always talk about what is he being asked to do and then you have to decipher through that to go wait he's not going to do that in the NFL he's going to do this can he do this can he right and we're going to talk about some guys like that yeah but you know I do think in like in years past there's been guys misevaluated because I think the draft community or certain people go well, that doesn't look that good. Whatever. Deron Payne is always the first one that comes to my mind. Deron Payne came out and people were like, what? Washington's going to take him in the top 20? Uh, he's a second round pick. And I'm, you know, and I've, this is back at the Bleacher Report days, but I always think of him just because I go, people were, he doesn't make enough plays. He doesn't get in the backfield. Mm-hmm. And I went, he was never allowed to get in the backfield. He was on a part of a group at Alabama where they were so good. They were just like, Nick was like, stand him up. Don't let anybody move. We'll never be at a, at a position against any play ever. This is the safe way for us to win the game instead of you having six or seven highlight plays, but six or seven highlight plays for them might happen too because you're just renegading right yeah. so you have to go wait no, no no this guy's awesome 
When he does get a chance to disrupt, he does, but it's just few and far between. And okay, does that make work? What's he being asked? Oh, he's asking to two-gap all the game long or hold his ground against a double team. That doesn't mean he can't do the other things. Right. So you got to make sure you find some evidence of that and try to piece it all together. And uh, that's kind of the fun thing about the position a lot of times because this is one position where I feel like more than any in college football, people play out of position more than ever mm. because they – because. And the NFL, where this position is great, is they're going to go, we're going to put you at your position. You can just thrive and be your best. In college football, they just go, well, we just want to get the best 11 on the field, and you're the freakiest, so we're going to put you at like the toughest spot. Now, you don't even actually get to show your skills, but we think you can do that because the guy that we need to play at the position you think you're best at, there's no way he can do that. So yeah. we're going to put you at nose tackle, even though you're probably best at defense end, and that's what you'll be in the NFL, right? And that, if that makes sense, you know that that's a big part of this, and that's why I do find it fun evaluating this uh, position. It's one of my favorite positions to evaluate. Is is there a guy in this real quick? Is there yeah. a guy that's like a nose tackle? And uh, you see him more as a nose tackle that we're going to talk about oh, in your top five. Or well, no, 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 I don't know really. the top five guys. There's there's a there's a guy like that has some nose tackle tendencies. Yeah. Right. But no, we're not going to get into it this year of having a true like Tavondre Sweat is a nose tackle, right? Okay. Oh the, yeah, that's big true. Texas guy. JB Twoot says yeah. first of all, hope Ahmed Freed is doing uh, the heavy lifting given his uh, experience on big butts. That's true. I did look at all these big butts. More <laughs> importantly, what happened to the traditional nose tackle? Gilbert Brown, Tony Saragusa just don't exist. What changed? I get why there's less value, but no value. Yeah. Well, it's it's a little bit. I think goes into the versatility and the like. No longer defenses just don't go. We play three four and we play three four every play no matter what. Right. Yeah. That's just that's over. Right. So. Well, what what we had, and this also goes into versatility of defense and the freak of natures we have at the defensive line right now, mm -hmm. where, yeah, like Dexter Lawrence can play nose tackle. That's Pete's in my eye. Yeah, he's he's that typical way. He's 330 pounds, right? Yeah. He can two-gap you and do that. But at the same time, the Giants don't want to line up in that every time, and they're going, wait, he's awesome. Let's move him here because we oh, he, he can shoot a gap. He can be a mismatch on a guard do and do that. He can do both, let alone, too, here's the other aspect of it. Like, like the, the positions become so freaky that – Guys like Chris Jones now, you watch Chris Jones. He lines up everywhere. He has a number of snaps every game. He plays nose tackle, right? So, yeah, he's not your typical what we would think of old school Jim Burt, right? Refrigerator Perry nose tackle, right? You know, these guys now, some of these D tackles, they're so good and so freaky at so many things. It's just like, hey, this defense, yeah, we need a nose tackle. But, oh, now it's second and six, and it's a different variety of plays and personnel. I'd like you to move over here a little bit. I need a little more disruption, a little more, wait, you know, get on the edge of the guard, do something like that. So it's not lost. It's yeah. not gone. They're still out there, right? Vita Vea is it's a true. nose tackle, yeah. right? Jalen Carter does nose tackle stuff. Jordan Davis does nose tackle stuff. They're there, but just the day of lining up there play after play after play, that's not there anymore. And we have the defensive technique alignments just to yeah. give you a clear picture if you're watching on Peacock or YouTube here it was it was a lot easier back in our day like you said it was yeah. just like either nose tackle oh, defensive tackle he, defensive he, end is he head up on the center or is he got a shade nose right I mean yeah, that's all edge, it was now you still got defensive end but they're not edge yeah. and so here's here's all the different alignments that you're looking at the three tech the nose tackle the nose shade five tech that's the defensive these, end these are yeah and you know really like when I look at all these these are all D tackles still yeah. Right, even the five and the four tech. I think for the most part, I'm still looking at more times than not is a D tackle. It's edge and then this. Yes, right. There's the exactly right, and, and you know the edge is the guy who lines up way outside the tackle or way outside the tight end, and it's all about hey, he's coming off the edge to get after the quarterback. That's what it's all about. Even these guys at the four and five technique. If you're watching on YouTube and seeing this diagram here, you know they're they're still more times than not being lined up at that position and going wait. No, no, no. You got to man up against that tackle and hold your ground and maybe two gap them, right? And those are special human beings out there at five tech that are deal with type of D tackles. Those are the kind of guys that are like, um, you know, Richard Seymour for the Patriots back in the day. My dad's team of Leonard Marshall, who was a freak of nature. Um, you know, uh, the, the DeForest Buckners of the world, sure. right? Yeah. These giant who go, wait, 
I can take big offensive tackle who's six seven three forty, and I can just me and him all day long, and uh, he'll never move me, coach. Like no problem. Oh, you want me to hold him up, coach? No problem. I'll do that. I mean, that's what that guy is. But all different varieties of what's needed as far as an interior defensive line. Uh, to your point, uh, Gilbert Brown had just seven career sacks in ten seasons. Dexter Lawrence has twenty one in five seasons. Vita Vea has twenty three and a half in six seasons. So those nose tackle guys are playing a little bit all over and doing the, more. Yes. Doing different things. We're seeing the freakiest group of D tackles in the history of the sport right now. Like, period. Like again, Dexter Lawrence at 345, the way he moves and does that, right? I mean, that's the reason we're talking about offensive linemen because there's just like, what? This guy's moving and running like this? Jordan Davis, like we talked about, Quinnen Williams, you know, De- uh, the, the Derek Brown. In, in Carolina, right? I mean, we had a run here of a few years where I think we had Quinnen Williams one year and then Derek Brown, and I think two years in a row, I was like, I think it's the best defensive tackle I've ever seen. I've never seen a defense. And then last year, remember, with Jalen Carter, it was the same thing. Yeah. I was going, I think it's the best defensive tackle I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, so that's what we're getting into is guys of this at this position right now. I mean, Vita Vea, again, he was not he, – Vita Vea, and you you might remember me at that time. I was like, he's a top 10 pick. Why is he mm. not – why is Dexter Lawrence not a top 10? Like, what was it? Because I don't even think the mold had changed in the brains of the NFL people still. They were still like, wait, these are big. These are nose tackles. And then once one did it – started to push the pocket everybody was like wait this guy can make people miss a little bit as far as pass protection and push the pocket we need to get more of these big guys like this all right so we're already behind schedule right. but pete wants to know that he will talk about dexter lawrence for 90 minutes if we're okay with that yeah. just cancel these Sexy rankings Dexy. Uh, giants fan himself here so let's get into before we get into your rankings this year we always like to do this keep you accountable yeah show you where you messed up thank we you like to we like to do that because you may have forgotten where you messed up yeah uh, your you. rankings last year yeah jalen carter uh number one you did not mess up there he certainly looked like the number one but it was a we- it was a little bit of a weird year for the defensive tackles and i was looking this up yeah um 13 rookie defensive tackles got at least 20 percent of the defensive snaps last year of those PFF rated Kalijah Kansi as their 10th best, Mozzie Smith 11th, Brian Breesey as their 12th, and you had guys like Kobe Turner who was a third rounder, Keanu Benton from Pittsburgh was a second rounder, but yeah. he was up there, Carl Brooks for Green Bay, Bowling Ooh. Green was a sixth I loved rounder. Him, yeah. So it does seem like this is a position where you're like, don't overthink it, right? Big dude, strong. I mean, like Mozzie Smith epitomized that, the strongest sure. guy out there maybe. Yeah. But it didn't translate the first year in the NFL. No, no, it didn't. I didn't we don't know about Mozzie. Mozzie was the thing we we were. I mean, he was the guy. He's the guy that we worry about in the draft every year. Wait, I see the skills. There's some elite stuff about him. But you know, we came in at that time, and I t- I remember saying, "Hey, he's really athletic." But man, there's a lot of plays where he's very content being blocked, and I don't know. Mm. But damn, he's three thirty and he moves like that. Like I, you know, okay, I'm gonna put him in the top five, right? You know, that's where hey, knowing the man and what makes the man and you know like we talk about sometimes that NFL environment does that bring out the best in the guy or does he start to whittle away and go whoa this isn't for me right so we'll see where that goes but I think it's up in the air about Mozzie for sure Mm -hmm. definitely Um, yeah and hey there's at this position too there's a little you know adjustment period maybe not for the top guys always but really almost for all of them it's rare you have one that just comes in and does what Jalen Carter did like Jalen Carter, we got to week eight last year, and I think I was on here a few times going, he might be the best D tackle in football already. Might like have been he's week in the, three, right? Yeah, I was like, he's he's in the combo. It's it's right up there with that. But we did see like, hey, Derek Brown. It took him. We're talking about him. He's ninety six million dollars, four year contract. And it took him a few years. Yeah. Quinn Quinn and, Quinn Quinn and Williams. He wasn't a superstar right away in year one. It was probably towards the end of year two, and then year three, we were like, whoa, oh my gosh, he's awesome. So there is there again. The, there there it is a position where they're being asked to do a lot more. Like we talk about, the offensive line is doing way more than they ever had to deal with in college, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we make fun of offensive lines in college because it's like step to the left, step to the right. It's this run play, and it's this run play. That's all we got, guys. That's it. So defensive tackles, the game's easy for them in that way in college. Now in the NFL, not only are they going, holy shit, I've never had a human like this over me blocking me. Wait, there's 90 million runs. They doubled me. They kicked me out. They trapped me. You know, A pulling guard came and hit me one time, let alone like these guys, offensive linemen, 
how to use their hands in the NFL. I'm still a beginner in that way, so that's where I think there's a little bit of a learning curve. We'll see where it goes there. I'm a little worried about Mozzie. The other ones I'm not quite as much worried okay. about as we go forward. Those first two are damn good, though, Carter a, and Kalaji Kansi. It's a little game theory in the draft, too, because right. if it does take you know three years for a guy to develop, it's just like, all right, you kind of wasted those those rookie years, right? Because it, it's so valuable to have a defensive tackle because they're, they're getting paid $20 million, the elite ones, right? But it's like if you do find one of those elite ones, and Pete's noting right here, you usually reward them, lock them up, and, and other teams do not have access to no, that player. No, there. You, you don't let that guy out of the building. That's exactly right. You don't let Matabuke, Chris, you know, Chris Jones, Dexter Lawrence, Jalen Carter, Christian Wilkins got out of the building because they spent so much money on other people mm -hmm. that they couldn't figure it out, right? But yeah, it's rare to see that guy walk in free agency because, again, we're talking about humans. A lot of times they're going, wait, they're 330? They're that strong and they're that athletic? What? Like that? That's usually where a team does not want to give up on that guy. Ed Oliver, another one, maybe yeah, a little bit of a late sure, bloomer here. Yeah, sure, but definitely. Like Jeffrey Simmons, I mean, he came into the league and kicked ass right away. But again, other... Uh, examples of what we're talking about. You don't let those guys out the door once you got them on your football team. We have made you wait long enough, but I think Bottom, that was good, good context yeah, about the position, gotta, where it is right it. now. I mean, right. it's like, it, that's what these are. These are like, we talk about the position, the state of the position, where it is in college and the NFL, and now we're getting into the rankings. You have, what, three tiers here for these guys. Your first tier, you got two players in your first tier. Yep. Day one difference makers. You know it. Both these guys will come in right. day one and be difference makers. And if they're not, we'll say it will happen in year two. That's yeah. what we'll come back and say. We're, <laughs> we're pretty sure we saw some good things. Uh, but your number one player for defensive tackles in the 2024 draft class is? Texas fight. Texas fight. Yeah, Texas fight. Texas fight. Texas fight. Yeah, Texas fight. One of my favorite guys at the Combine, too. Not only like one of my favorite players to watch in the draft, but one of my favorite humans that I met Ooh. in the draft process. Byron Murphy II from Texas. The Longhorns. Yes. I mean, incredible ball of muscle and explosion. That's what he is. You talk about muscle, explosion, pliable, bendable, right? Disruption, yet can hold his ground at an incredible rate for a guy that's, you know, not the biggest defensive tackle in the world, right? All of that is amazing, right? The athleticism is amazing. So that's where I look at it right off the bat and go, wait, not only can this guy just win with pure explosion, quickness, be disruptive, do those type of things, right? You know, the next play on defense, they go, hey, wait, we need to play shade knows and now we need you to hold your ground mm. and don't be disruptive and don't let them move you and he can do that too right along the lines of that conversation we were just having of the versatility there so he's awesome that way he's awesome in one on one he's very good and a good anchor for a guy his size against the double teams and like a Jalen Carter last year can he, he wins wrestling matches, right? Where it's like, okay, it's a stalemate, and oh, no, and he, oh, whoa, he's on a knee, and it looks like he might not, be, oh, what? He got the guy off him, and then he still made the tackle, right? That, to me, was very Jalen Carter-ish of last year, where I'd see time trial go, he's on both knees, and he just fought the guy off and got up and made a tackle, and that's what's incredible about this guy. He is a big ball of muscle, my man Byron Murphy. Yeah, he was the Big 12 defensive lineman of the year. His teammate, actually, Tavondre Sweat, was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Perhaps we'll get to him here. <sighs> I got to say something about that. Yeah. Okay. That, that to me, I, I just, I don't even know how that's possible. I don't know either. I don't know. You, right? You watched a little. Yeah. Okay. Like, I, I, you know, I want to be silly and go, all the people that vote for Big 12 things, their votes need to be rescinded. Like, they got to be rescinded. How can you watch a game of Texas and not go... Number 90 is the best player on their defense. And you're going to give it to the other guy? Just why? Because he's big? I he's the biggest so. person out there? That, to me, is like just I don't even get it. One guy is dominating and everywhere. The other guy, you see him every now and then. Let's make him the defensive player of the year. Like, what a crock of shit that is. I'll tell you what. If you run at Tavondre Sweat, you have, you're, it's not going to be fun. Well, no. But if you no. run a little bit away from him, I think you're going to you be got, okay. You're okay. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. Let alone, you know, again, Tavondre Sweat, there's plays where you just go, hey, I'd like to see more. You're too big and strong to be blocked that easily or you know, to be that content with being blocked, right? Yeah. Let's so, not make this a uh, no. bash on Sweat. No. No, no, but, we're uh, not. We're, but gonna, no, we're gonna talk so, about sweat later. So we're, we're more on Murphy here. Yeah. But first, you like you mentioned, you did talk to him at the combine. You fell in love with him. Yeah, maybe, maybe a man crush here. Yeah, maybe this is a man. No, crush. It's a man crush for sure. Uh, so here, here is what he said to you guys uh, at the combine. What do I do best? Stop the run. I feel mm. like I, that's what I do best. I feel like you know I'm a uh, I'm a force in in the run game. I feel like 
Uh, you know, whatever needs to be done in the run, you know, that, I'm, I'm there. You know, uh, I make plays. Uh, you know, I can just stop the run at any time, you know. You can't move your ass. Yeah. I mean, it's strong and then you're compact. All right. I've been knowing that, like, ever since I was, you know, a child, like, I always been, like, just You've always had to rock up. Rocked up. Eight I, years old, you yeah, were like, everyone I, was like, damn, he's got I, muscles. Yeah, I came out swole. So, like, <laughs> I've, I've been like this. I've really been like this my whole life. So. <laughs> he came out he's swole. Awesome. He's awesome. He really is. He's uh he, I mean, it, it looks like he came out as well. Because, you know, I always start my evaluations with a talk of the body, right? I always, my first paragraph is usually just talking in the body, kind of painting that picture in my own brain, right? And, you know, just a ball of power, not sloppy, dense as hell. Love his legs. Legs are elite. Yeah, he's six foot, but he's high cut waist. And his arm length is not bad for being, you know, six feet tall. But like... I mean, this is one that was, it's kind of a no brainer. As soon as you turn it on, you just go, wait, wait, one guy's getting off the ball way quicker than everybody else. One guy is extremely explosive. Who's that guy? Oh, it's number 90, right? The get off, the quicks, the change of direction, right? Or they're off the charts for his size, right? His strength is off the charts. The bend, acceleration, like right? we talked about, the pliable, the, fluid, the fluidity of his movements is really impressive, right? Extremely like, powerful at the point of attack, right? Low pads great legs right can anchor in there against double teams right wins in a lot of weird positions like I talked about that to me is essential for like you look at good tackles in the NFL right you're not going to always be in a good position like you know that when the tackle and guard double team every now and then you're going to be like whoa I'm bent over sideways and can how do you recover off that are you going to go into the ground and just get you know pancaked or are you going to be able to somehow fight it off and get back into the play a little bit yeah and that's I mean you got to do that because you're you're going to have a hand of plays in every NFL game that are going to be like that. He is amazing at that. His balance is unreal, right? When you try to cut block him, go at his legs, maybe he is engaged with somebody and then somebody hits him on the side, right? Like a, a lineman who's going up to the second level. Give him, he stays on balance, right? He's always where he's supposed to be. He's got very good hands. He's got great instincts and eyes. He sees the ball. He sees what's going on, even as he's being blocked or double teamed. You can tell, right? He's got that no regard for his body aspect that I like. Oh, I'm being blocked, but the guy's running through here. I'm just going to let him. I'm going to go out there and put my head and face in there. He's going to hit me, and I'm going to take a big shot, but he's going to get tackled. He's going down. He had that. So that's what I really, really loved about him. But uh, the ability to get off blocks was special as well. Yeah. I mean, he can do it a lot of different ways. I, I loved watching him, and I do have a man crush, by the way. His strength, awareness, his balance against Alabama. He had five pressures. I looked at all those. He split double teams, showed some speed around the edge on one pressure, did that against Oklahoma right. as well. Like so he's got bend. some, some yeah. quickness here. Yeah. So the strength and all that is there. You did mention it, the, the, the size and the height. Uh, so if we look at his decagon here, yeah. it is going to be an interesting looking decagon because the athletic stuff there, he's got massive hands in the 90s. 97th percentile. The 40 yard dash was in the 91st percentile. The 10 yard split, incredible. 83rd height though in the second percentile. Weight 28th, wingspan 14th, and arm length a little bit longer, but still below average at 22. Yeah, that, that's what will stop him from being a top 10 or top 12 pick mm -hmm. in the draft. That's 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 going to end that right. But that's why you know I think somewhere between 15 and 25, and that range. Right, that's when I think we see the door open up for Byron Murphy. I do. You know, he's he's he is he's a little different, right? He's not going to make some of the old school. Wait, I got to have a defensive tackle with this kind of wingspan and all that. They're, they're not going to feel comfortable. But as we're seeing in the NFL right now, there's value with these guys, this disruption guys, right? Teams aren't just like we talk about lining up in the same place every time. Or even if they're lining up in the same place, they're asking their guys like, hey, when he says set hut, we want you to go two gaps over. We want you to slant this way. We want you to stunt that way, right? So he's going to be really good at that. And then when I look at it too and go, he's the kind of guy where when you – done and we talk about this a lot of times where like you know guys being asked to slunt and stand a lot uh, stunt and slant a lot and he gets moved easily and I go well yeah he's being out he's 
told to go that way, and now he's got a 320-pound man on his back. It's hard to stop, right? He's one of the few people you're going to find out there that can kind of like do that and then mm-hmm. be like, no, I'm stopping, even though you're on my back trying to push me the way I was going, right? So that's where he's damn good, right? But yeah, this is more along the lines of a guy we talked about in the top five from last year. It's a Kalijah Kansi. It's an Aaron Donald-ish type of football player. It's a Sheldon Rankins, who was a first-rounder out of Louisville. I think he's better than Sheldon Rankins coming out. There's no doubt about it. It, right, I think it's it's I think it's better than Kalijah Kansi last year, and I love Kalijah Kansi. Mm. Kalijah might have been more athletic. I think this guy's stouter and more powerful. That's where I really like him. One on ones versus guards, forget about it. Yes. Right, he's phenomenal. Right, what else? What do you want to add to that? I know you want to say. I something looked up there. his negative because yeah. PFF separates the negatively graded run plays, yeah. and so I always like to look at those guys. Like, how are they getting? When they get beat, how do they get yes, beat? Yes, right. And his were almost exclusively, and this was rare for the other. His were almost exclusively double teams, where he did a pretty good job of holding. It his wasn't ground. bad. Like he yeah. just gets hit and he gets turned. He might lose a yeah. yard or two, but you're like, okay. I mean, yeah, you're gonna get everyone him. else kind of lost some one on one battles. Like, rarely never showed loses up on his a one on one. Right. No, it just it, it's so rare. Uh, really damn good player. Like we said, I think. I think we hit it all really when it comes to him and, and somehow, some way. Um, but you know, can get skiddy, arm over, you know, speed to power, the the power rip, right? Where he runs into somebody and like jars them back and then he rips them to the ground and goes by him, right? He can he can avoid a blocker and go around him and make a, a, a tackle that way. You know, got a little spin move you see in the pass rush. Really, you know, impressive, impressive football player. No question the number one defensive tackle in the draft for me. PFF said perhaps nothing better sums up Murphy's strength than that he played nose tackle despite 360-pound Tavondre Sweat's presence along Texas's defensive line. It's, it's context clues. We talk about that, right, with the DBs and some of these guys. It, it says a lot. Hey, we got a huge human, one of the biggest on earth. Yeah. We don't want him being here. We think you're actually stronger than he is. So this is where he's being mocked right now. About in the top 20s, uh, he was like a third round guy back in December. Gosh, so now was the, he really? the real professionals have started to take a look at some tape here and give their feedback because he has shot up now. And so he is, looks like. Just inside of 20 now, but maybe. But you think that maybe like what, 10 to 20 range? I, I, I think that's about it, right? You know, I, I would. Like to be more specific, probably 12 to 20, 12 to 25, okay. maybe. But right in that range, that's kind of where I would see it happening. I think his value is 29 to the Detroit Lions in the first round. I think that's probably <laughs> would be proper value. You don't need, you Anything don't need else would him. Be an overdraft. You we'll got take enough him. big people right, and D linemen now. You're all right. You're, you're, I just want to have options when we yeah, get to number apparently. 29. You want just the best team ever. <laughs> that's what you want. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there's your number two, but he is not alone in this tier. You have no. another player in this tier, and this is a player. That when we did edge rankings, there were a few homies that were like, hey, what about this guy? That's hey, right. Well, how come you didn't talk about this right. guy? Because we have him as the number two defensive tackle, versatile defensive tackle. And that player is? Darius Robinson, Missouri. Man, what? how do you not like watching Darius Robinson tape? First off, the first play I'll say to our listeners and the people that send questions in, I think I saw him come off the edge and I went, oh, no. Oh, gosh. I, he Maybe he is in an elite defensive end. Uh-oh. I, I think he came off and he dominated a run play, right? And I was like, oh, no. Maybe he wasn't even made it. I, maybe I messed up, right? Uh, but as I went on, no. We, we got it, right? He's a defensive tackle. This is what he is. Now, again, I didn't make that determination blind, right? You know I, I talked to people in football, and I knew people in football were more evaluated as a D tackle than DN from, from everything I – so that's the reason I waited so long, okay? Um, but – I think it starts just with, like, you want to talk about the Greek gaudiest of bodies ever, right? That's where this starts with this guy, too. You know I love Byron Murphy's body. This is a totally different body. This is, like, you know, tall, long, shoulders, arms, great legs, cut up, chiseled, broad-shouldered, 285-pound Greek god statue is what we got of Darius Robinson. Incredible get off, incredible upper body hand arm strength, like insanity in the membrane when it comes to that department, right? He gets his hands on any, he has got the most violent get off, put his hands on the shoulders of the chest of an offensive lineman and control that human being like he's a toy of, in the draft. He is the best in that department. Now, he might not be the best as bending and pliable like a Byron Murphy, right? His game's a little bit more upright, but still 
an absolute freak, right? When you talk about the first step, the quick, violent hands, and then the ability to sh shed and just shock boxer blockers. I mean, look at this guy. This is 285. He looks like he's a he's got a body like a, a 205 pound DB has, yeah. right? I mean, dominant everywhere. The hell with the stats. It is f the play up extraordinaire disruption. Right, throwing blockers out of the way. Yeah, he doesn't get the tackle, but the running back's like, "Oh no, I'm not going there. He's there." Right? I mean, it's it's incredible that way. Um, he he can, like I said, he can play a little stuff upright and stiff, but it's not bad. And then he makes up for it with the great physicality and hand strikes, and he keeps legs moving on contact always. That's where he's really good. I mean, he sells out, like we talk about with Byron Murphy, maybe even more in this department with Darius Robinson. Like, no regard for his body, right? I'm going to get crushed here. I don't care. I'm going to dive in front of the moving truck and take one for the team because we got to get him down, right? Amazing. Big moment football, amazing. Right, I start to go through games, Georgia, a few of the other games, and late in the game, they need to play the defense. Damn, Darius Robinson shows up. He knows what time it is when it's time to make a play. And he, right? Yeah, and he played in their bowl game, too, which he didn't need to do. No, he played in the not. bowl game against Ohio State. I like that, too. Uh, 22 years old, does turn 23 in September. He's from Southfield, Michigan, which is right close to Detroit, so oh. another player who, out of respect for the yeah. Lions and hosting the draft, he should be available oh, there. Oh, he's at, got Detroit-type attitude. I could see that. I so, like it. So he played five seasons at Missouri. The first four were at defensive tackle. Then he moved over to edge last season. Uh, Nathan Witt was one of the homies. He goes, hey, what about Darius Robinson out of Missouri? Are you considering him a defensive tackle, or was he not good enough to make that list? And so he, he wanted to know about this, yeah. too. And, and so Missouri played him at both spots, and you can see last year compared to the first four years at Mizzou. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, he can do anything, right? He's a, he's a freak of nature, so he can do it all. His best position is going to be defensive tackle. He doesn't have the type of first step – and speed and explosion that is going to scare NFL elite tackles with like, oh no, here comes the speed rush. He's going to go around me, yeah, right? As an edge, he used his strength he more just, than his speed. He, exactly right. It's very few plays where you see him actually get around the edge and go, oh wow, he snuck by that guy with speed, right? Or using his hands. It's usually he comes into you full speed, he locks out those arms, and he tries to take the offensive tackle on a magic carpet ride into the quarterback's <laughs> legs, right? I mean, that, yeah. that's what he's trying to do. Uh, so that's where I think he is better on the edge and then you know back to our chart yeah if you want to look at that like he's a what I would call a three technique or a five technique he'd be perfect he's got plenty of that strength we talk about to be like oh what Lane Johnson you want to line I'll line up right in front of you let's see let's get after it I can, I can hold my ground I don't need help yeah. from anybody else they don't need to stun me it'll just be me and you he's capable of that let maybe don't maybe don't like egg him on well, like that. I wouldn't egg him on either. I wouldn't egg him on either. But I don't know. Maybe if I looked like Darius Robinson, yeah, I would egg him on. I don't know. Good point. Uh, but but yeah, you look at that that four five and mm -hmm. then that three. That's what he is, right? With okay, and occasionally if you want to let him line up wild side and just use his speed and just try to crash and collapse the pocket from the outside, you'll love that too. But shedding gaps, two gapping, all of that is off the charts good. Right, he's one of the safest picks in the draft. Right, he's one of those guys where you just go, you know, it, 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 the the floor is he's our starting three technique or five technique for like ten years, and he's like real good. Hmm. Right, that, that like there's no bust factor with this human being. Okay, um, I think the I talked about the selling out, right. the speed to power on the edge, the shedding the blocks, all of that. Right, I think when I looked at him as a fo football player, and if I had to throw out names here, to me he's it's it's more DeForest Buckner, hmm. right? It's that guy. If you look at DeForest Buckner, right, Eric Armstead, you know they're a little heavier in weight, but it's, it's same arm length. They're in the, it's in the ballpark. I think it's more that type of guy. Right. You know, it, I did write Jadeveon Clowney in a lot of ways because wow. he's on the edge. He looks like that. He's not as athletic as Clowney. He's more powerful than Clowney. Clowney, I think, was like 260-something coming out, right? This guy's a bigger human being uh, and yeah. a little more power-based. An anonymous scouting director yeah. in the NFC on NFL.com says, he's still learning to play. Kind of reminds me of Keon White, he says to him. Oh, I, I hear that. Patriots second-round pick in yeah. 2023, traits yeah. and what he could become. Uh, we do have his decagon, too, which is a little misleading because he is being 
compared to edge guys in this Decagon, which, right. which shows the hand size, arm length, all the percentiles here. He's definitely one of the bigger edge guys. You see the athletic qualities would be on the lesser end of the edge guys, which is exact, speaks to your point of why he is more of a yes. three technique or, or five technique. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's right. He's, 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 he's an inside guy. He is, and that's where I think he's going to shine. You know, the Keon White thing this is an interesting one. I mm. actually have Keon White uh, written down for somebody else we're going to talk oh, about wow. a little later. Um, I think he's more athletic than Keon White, though, even more athletic than he is. He's a little different that way, but as we saw, Keon White had a damn good year last year for the Patriots and did a lot of good things. I, I can understand that comparison, but love the player. Love the physicality. Love the fact that, that there's – you know, it's another one where you see SEC football, you see dominant play, he can't be blocked, and you go, he really doesn't know anything. He doesn't use his hands. He doesn't have a spin move. He does nothing. Yeah. He's just doing it with his pure ability, playing hard, being tough. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited for him. Got a chance you, to meet him at the at the uh, you Super did. Bowl, you did too. Talk to him. And, uh, yeah, it's Super Bowl, I talked to him. Combine, talked to him a little uh, bit. Two times. Couldn't have been, couldn't have been a better dude. Um, you think he goes first round? Definitely. Definitely. I definitely think he's in the first round. Yeah. I think, like, I, 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 I mean, I, I wouldn't be shocked. Like, 18 to 32 is what I wrote down. Hmm. I don't think, like, again, I don't overthink this. This is one where I look at it and go, wait, no, no, no. 285, ran 49, right? Incredible arms. Nobody overpowers him. You know, like we talked about with Byron Murphy and you brought up, the bad plays are like stalemates. Like yeah. it's like there's no bad plays. The bad plays are you go, okay, tie, tie. You guys did a tie, right? That's all there is to it. Uh, he'll fit the NFL game instantly. To your point, right now he is a projected late first round pick, early second round pick. He was mocked in the fourth or fifth round in December. Gosh. And then people saw him with his shirt off and said, you know what, that's probably late, late first round, early second round. So those two guys are in Tier 1. We closed Tier 1. Yep. They stand above the rest. These next guys are very good, but not in Tier 1. We start with Tier 2. This is impact players with caveats. Oh, so we'll have to make sure to get to the caveats. On these guys, we got two just guys. just got like, like, they're not perfect, right? Where the other two I'm telling you Who are. Who amongst us is? Well, uh, you know, I, you know I, I, I'm pretty I, close. I, know, but I, don't know. I know, you're close. You're, you're so, <laughs> same with my wife. She seems to be close. Exactly. Too. We both yeah. just seem yes. similar in that way. Uh, but no, these are like the other two where I'd say, listen, I don't have many questions about them, right? Here. Not that there's many questions, right? But there's just like one thing you'd go, ooh, I wish they could get a little bit better at this. Or there's one part of their game that you just go, they need to work on that. But yeah. still awesome. And I still look at both of them and go, they're first-round talents for my mm, money. Wow. Yes. Well, both these guys, you would peg in the first round. I too. definitely would. Interesting. I okay. would, yes. All right, so Tier 2, impact players with caveats. Your number three defensive tackle is? Dwayne Carter from Duke, number 90, right? Uh, th this, is your, this is your athletic disruptive defensive tackle, right? That's what he is. Explosive, get off, disruption, right? You know, he's got a good-looking body. He's kind of a compact defensive tackle. He's not the space eater type, right? You know, he looks like he, when you turn on the film, you see him, you go, oh, he looks like the type that's going to win, causing disruption, shooting gaps, doing all that. Get off is really good. The movement is phenomenal, right? I mean, to me, it's more along the lines of Byron Murphy as far as the explosive, the bendability, right? The ability to be in a weird position, still overcome it, do all of that. That's where he is. He wins with like, either winning with pure explosiveness, getting skinny, shooting the gap, or being so explosive that he gets on top of the linemen before they can even really get their feet in the ground, and all of a sudden they're just backpedaling, going backwards. That's what he really does, right? He's got very good uh, bull rush, right? He's got a pretty good anchor versus double teams, though this is one of the areas you'd go, hey, it needs a little work. He's not the stoutest as far as when it comes to holding his ground against double teams or maybe a bigger, ta bigger offensive lineman every now and then that's where it's not perfect and that's why we put him in with a caveat to a degree right but has that play hard sellout mentality I talk about right he's a three technique you know who can do everything as far as that four three teams I think are going to really like him a lot that's kind of what jumped out me at first I got a few other thoughts but I wanted to hear your thoughts yeah let's too. get a little background on him yeah. too here because he was just a three-star recruit coming out of high school was actually a standout baseball player in wow. high school that surprises me wow. it's six two probably was not three 
302 at the time, but uh, played five seasons at Duke. He was a first-team All-ACC this past year, was the uh, Jim Tatum Award winner in the ACC for the conference top scholar athlete. So he's a smart dude, and he's a leader, too. Three-year captain. Uh, the last three years at Duke, and so he has basically led that team and that resurgence. They were very, very good this past year. So hey, he's a these part of three lot of guys good we're talking about, you can tell the game's important to them. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't. You know, I, I don't have to talk to a coach and go like like Mozzie Smith, like we talked about last year, where yeah. I went, oh, there's things here where oh, I'm not sure, right? And then we yeah. get closer to the draft, you kind of hear those things and go, yeah, that's effort and work and how tough he is is a is, it is a thing. It kind of showed up on film, right? These three right here, this is like. The, the ones we've talked about, they they're, they love football. You can tell. They're pissed when they get blocked. They're pissed if they don't make a tackle, right? They're emotionally invested in the game, and that always gives me confidence when you're watching film and evaluating that. So his mock draft, let's look at this real quick because I think this is interesting and it leads to a couple uh, yeah. videos of him too. Yeah. And so it's interesting for, for Dwayne Carter because I think you're probably a little higher on him than, than the Sounds consensus like yes. right now. Right. Because um, his mock draft has, has been like a roller coaster ride basically. He was off the radar, and then you see it right around there in, in February shoot up to the top 50, and it's, it's leveled off since then, but that was around the time, and Pete informed us, that the Senior Bowl was happening, and he stood out at the Senior Bowl. Yes, and did. I think guys back there, Kristen and, and everyone, do we have his Senior Bowl no, because he Michigan, has a couple of Michigan reps here. getting dominated again. Yeah, okay, well, that was rare. <laughs> um, don't know why we showed that rare. one. <laughs> uh, but here, yeah, this is uh, – But this is what I was talking about. See how his great get-off, he gets underneath pop people's body – Right, gets underneath their pads. Yep. You see this a lot on film. I mean, right, this is every game. His yeah. his pop, his quicks, his explosion. The lineman can't get ready and get an anchor set in the ground, and all of a sudden he just takes him for a ride. Okay, right, incredible that way. And this is against the Wisconsin offensive lineman. See, and he does the similar same thing. type of thing, right? See, so he's got to what he does too is because he can win with quicks. Like on this one is a little different because see how he gives the little shimmy side to side yeah. as he comes off the line. So he gets the guy like, oh wait, he's gonna beat me with quicks, and then all of a sudden he hits you in the chest, and you're going, oh no, I was I was getting adjusted to go side to side, and this is the other angle. He he is great at this. This is he's a guy here where listen, you know. We talk about all the things he can do defensive line. He's a defensive tackle, but he's also a guy where, like, I wrote him. He could play strong. You could go into a game and go, he's got to play strong side DN today, mm-hmm. right? He's he's going to have to pass rush, and he's going to have to take on the tight end, the tackle, and the running game and do all that. But, like, we're going to play him out there. He's got enough bend and first step and moves and things to work with there as a pure pass rusher that are really valuable. Yeah. And I, I think it's going to, you know, come in handy in the NFL. Yeah, he messed up the game against Notre Dame for sure. He had six pressures in that game, two of them where he just bull rushed the center. He had one uh, kind of yeah. like outside, inside, quick move off the tackle, uh, yep. bull rush on the guard. Uh, lined up at edge one time and just stunted into the, the middle of the line, got another edge. He, he played against Florida State, too, and I was like, all right, I want to see a good game, Notre Dame. And then, a, and then a game where he got zero pressures against Florida State, and I was like, what, what happened here? I do think there were a couple of plays where he could have been credited with a with a uh, yeah, but the game was so good, right? There was one where he busted through on a fake reverse and he flushed Jordan Travis out of the pocket. Yep, right. Um, but there are so many quick RPO plays in that game, he just didn't have an opportunity. But right. Even so, even in the game where he doesn't get credited no, with a quote unquote right. pressure, right. He was still effective. Well, and then what you do and look at those games, you just look at and go, okay, so what? Then Jordan Travis threw a quick over here, but like, what did that, that initial get off? Right? Did, yeah. Like you could still see on a few of those plays where you go, oh, they threw it really quick. You go, well, he's in the midst of dominating that guard that guard is going backwards it just he doesn't get a chance to do it right so there's that now like we talked about he gets moved in the running game every now and then they are a team like we talked about a little bit where they ask their guys to move and stunt a lot where I think you're gonna watch and go a lot of his bad plays I'm gonna go this is hard like I know we all want him to stop here in the gap, but they'd asked him to run really fast to this one area with a guy pushing him in that direction, and we're going, no, no, you should just stop in the gap there. That's rare, right? Yeah. So that's where I, one of the things I wrote in my notes is I think you're going to see some bad plays where I'm going to go, it's not re- really realistic to ask him to be good in this play. That's not fair to him there, right? But it, Justin Matabuke has kind of came into my mind as mm. I was watching him. It's that type of guy, right? You know, and um, let's see, uh, you know, getting off the blocks 
again, for a guy that's not extra long and I don't look at him to be a two-gapper and all that, but when he was engaged with a guard and he saw the ball coming a certain way, man, he could throw people off or get off the block and get after the ball carrier uh, at a really impressive rate. He really was. Loved the player. Really impressive in all areas. Very strong for his size. Uses his hands well. Gets off box. You know, can two-gap if he needs to, but it's not ideal, right? He's a disruptive three technique who will be good in all areas. And I wrote down, I wrote Matabuke, Kobe Turner type of type of player, in my opinion, where it's not perfect coming out of college, but damn, there's some good. And you go, whoa, there's really some disruptive traits here. Um, yeah, I, I, I really like Dwayne Carter. Yeah. And I would be shocked if he doesn't end up going higher than where he's projected right some now. moldable clay. He has some good pedigree, too. Athletic family. His dad played wide receiver at Ohio State. His uncle played running back at Notre Dame. His grandfather played football and track at Youngstown State. Holy so crap. it's in the family. For I didn't the, realize uh, it went that deep. Dwayne, Dwayne Carter, your number three defensive tackle who you think you would take if you were thinking about it, if you needed a defensive tackle at the end, of the, the end of the first round. You're getting the end of the first round? I definitely would be thinking about Dwayne Carter. And so you're thinking about this with your number four guy too, right? Yeah, definitely. If you need a, if you need a defensive tackle, you're at the end of the first round. Maybe this guy's an option. Your number four defensive tackle for 2024 is Johnny, A.K. Jerzon Newton. Yes, Johnny was a good man. Yes, Johnny is the man. Johnny is the man. He now this is a different kind of guy, right? This is a little bit more of the stout power-based type of defensive tackle. Don't want to discredit him. He's still very athletic, right? Great-looking body, powerful, proportionate, right? Love his legs. Not as much as Byron Murphy's, but I really do like them, right? Good athlete, but not like not like Carter, who we just talked about, or Murphy from Texas. This is a little different here, right? He's not quite as um, explosive, not quite as bendable, and like going to win in weird positions, right? I think that's the big thing. You know, he's not quite as twitchy and quick as those guys, right? Mm -hmm. But his anchor versus a double team and stuff like that can be damn good. His ability to just overpower people, you know, it can be every bit as good as those guys in that department, right? Uh, but that's what he is. And and then two, he was a he was asked to two gap a lot. Unlike the other guys we talked about, mm. he was asked a lot of the times, hey, hold the guy up, right? Just hold him in place and then see where the ball goes and dis disengage that way. Strong as hell, right? Really gets off the blocks well. Like, really can hold his ground as a run defender, right? He can play five technique, like we were talking about with Darius Robinson, where he can just be like, hey, biggest tackle, biggest man on earth. Yeah. Don't worry. Let's Played go up there, at it. out there quite a bit. Played it quite yeah. a bit, right? Well, a lot, right? Now, that's where, to me, you know, he plays he can play a little high at times, a little more upright maybe than some of the guys we've talked to talked about at this point. And that's where sometimes like every now and then you'll see a double team that kind of moves him and I just go, "Well, he just got to learn to do it right." Like he's not worried about it, but every now and then you see one move him because I think he's he does play a little too tall that way, right? Um but, you know, as a run defender, there's not much you're not going to like about him. And then, you know, still, even though I'm painting the picture of a little lesser athlete, I don't want it to be thought of as a lesser athlete. It's still a damn good athlete. Yeah. I mean, his ability to kind of shuffle sideways, laterally down the line of scrimmage and follow a run while people are trying to chop block him or get at his feet and get him out of the play, very good in that department as well, right? So that's where I really like him. And then, you know, as a pass rusher, it's it's push the pocket, but you know he does show a unique ability to kind of get on the edge of some guards and then kind of like you go, damn, he's just gonna kind of sp speed by this guy and you know have a little bit of a bend and get to the quarterback. And you could see it right there. I mean, again, he's an express. He's he's an impressive human being. There's no question about that. He's taking on Iowa right there in the middle. And there's a uh, – can we rewind that? Can we go back to that one if we possible? Because there he was playing like the five technique that mm. we talk about so much. And I want people to watch and, and kind of see it, right? Oh, look at this in real right time. Here, we're real rewinding. time, rewinding it. He's towards the top of the screen, right? That's good. You're good right there, right? You said that he's the second guy from the top on yep. the line of scrimmage. So go ahead. Let Lined it play. Up on the, on the right? uh, guard he's, there. Yeah, right? or right on the – maybe a four, oh, yeah. right? But look, they down block him. He just throws the guy off, disengage, disengages, makes the tackle, right? You see that a lot on film. That's what he's – he's very good at that. You know, his arms aren't ideal length for two-gapping, but – 
he does it at such a high rate that I, I think teams are going to ask him to do it a lot. And you could see he is a powerful, stout body. There's the one where you see a little bit of the bend around the edge that's yep. rare for a guard, right? So even though he's not as loose and as pliable as some of the other guys we've talked about, as a pass rusher, there's something there to, to play with for sure. So there were there were a lot of pressures against the uh, the elite competition in the Big Ten, which is part of the reason why he was the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. He was a first-team All-American this past year. He had seven pressures against Penn State, and they had a real hard time with him. Using, he used his quickness a lot of the time there, kind of his patience, his smarts to kind of find a lane. Seven pressures versus Wisconsin. You just saw one of them right yeah, there. Right. And I thought I tried to write them all down, which ones they were. Quicks to power, I thought, yeah, early on. Definitely. And then uh, good use of hands and swims to move around single blocks. Yeah. And so both those teams, and both those teams are known for having good, strong offensive lines, had difficulty with with Johnny Newton. Yeah, you know, they, they, they should. He's a player. I mean, he's a pure, physical, powerful beast, right? That's where, you know, he's a little different than, you know, obviously different than Darius Robinson who we talked about, but that's where I think he's a little bit different than Carter and Byron Murphy in that I don't think you're going to get him as much and look at go, ooh, disruption, get in the backfield, just create chaos. This will be a little bit more of, hey, hold your ground, hey, head up on this guy, just power rush him and push him into the pocket, do that type of stuff, and I think he'll thrive there, right? You know, I, I, I talked about it. There's really not a lot of negatives in his game. I thought balance and ability to anchor is not on, on par yeah. with Murphy, and that's, I think, just a little bit of the playing high and just being a hair stiffer than they are. Don't think he's the overall athlete that Duke and Texas kid are, right? But, you know, uh, he is disruptive. He's strong as hell, right? I didn't think his eyes were as good as those other guys either, right? There was games where I'd watch and go, uh, you know, I felt like yeah, those guys would get off that block and make that tackle. They would have saw it coming. There was a, there was plays in games where I went, oh, he didn't know that guy was going by him right there or didn't really see it. But, you know, still, damn good football player. Yeah. And I look at it like I wrote 25 to 40. And maybe I'm lower than the draft community. I don't really I don't know, know exactly where he's about, at, but that's about where I had him. Where consensus is right now, I, I mentioned about Murphy. It was like you saw the negatively graded run plays were basically double teams where he just held his ground. For for Newton, the negatively graded run plays were plays where he did get moved by one moved single blocker, yeah. you know, not even a double team yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And I did, like one of the, I was like, all right, Indiana, they gave up 45 points against Indiana. And Indiana's right. not that good. Right. Uh, and he was kind of a non factor in yeah. that game. And they handled him pretty well. And it wasn't just all double teams and so that's where you kind of take pause you're like how did how did that happen i don't know that that would happen right with like Byron that wouldn't happen to the other or the, or the exactly. dude kid right that, that, that's 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 to me you're thinking like me yeah so those are the things i knit again these are all good players we know that so you got to nitpick a little bit yeah and yeah it, it's some of that that where, where i really like this guy yep but he's just not quite in the class of the top three because of what you said there was a little bit more negative there wasn't quite as much disruption and dominance that way but of course still we're talking about a big special human being here who's very athletic for his size and no doubt a starting defense alignment for your team you know in, in the near future here little medical concern with right. him had surgery in january for a partial jones fracture in his foot at the combine he told you guys that uh, he would be working out at his pro day but he was not able to do that Couldn't and do so it. yep um and who knows maybe he was playing with some of that last year too when he was still the First team All American, so he's got a, a sneaky, powerful stride to his running that I thought that was to me one of the things that really jumped out. You talked about the bend and getting around the edge a little bit and doing that. You know, like one of those two, like we talked about this with Dallas Turner, right? A little every now and then we go, well, it doesn't look that fast. But you go, damn, he's getting around this guy, though. And you realize, like, man, it's a big, powerful stride that covers a lot of ground that gives him the edge to kind of, like, turn the corner a little bit on a guard in a short area. That's pretty impressive, All right? He's a specimen. There's not a lot of negatives about the guy. Uh, Johnny Newton, Illinois, number four. That closes Tier 2 of impact players with some caveats. And now we go to Tier 3, and one man stands alone in Tier 3, which is kind of cool. Right? Would you rather be in a lower tier alone or in a higher tier and have to share it with someone else? It's <laughs> yeah. a debate that will rage on for years to come. Tier three, physical needs molding. So this is like a ball of clay. You yes. like the physical specimen. You need more uh, refining. Your number five defensive tackle is? Rook. Oh, row, 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 row. 
A ro ro ro. A ro 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 ro. Rook a ro ro ro. A ro ro ro. Rook a ro ro ro. And we're, we we swear to God we're saying this right too because and we we have no authority in this case because we say names wrong all the time. So I'm embarrassed. <laughs> like and, and and I say them in practice well and then I when it comes time to say it I can't say it. I don't. It's like amazing how I choke under the pressure. He there. told everyone a all ro ro All the H's are silent. Just remember three rows like row 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 your boat. Right. So a ro ro ro. Right. It's not right. ridiculous. Rook, row, row, row. We are we are right. And he plays no, it's not ridiculous. He plays like a No, like a he man. will row your ass gently down the stream in a hurry. <laughs> not right? gently. If you, yeah. Yeah, not gently. He yeah. will push your ass down the stream. You better watch out. I mean, this is one of the to me, this is why I love the evaluation process. It's, he's I love turning on a guy that I haven't heard anything about or whatever, right? Got no love, and I turn it on and I go, What? This guy? Who is this human being? Right? I mean, that's the first thing. First off, he's got a great looking body. He's 6'4, 294. He's got 34 inch arms. He ran a 489 at the combine. He ran a, he has a 16710, right? Those are some of the good edge pass rushers had 16s and 166. And one, I mean, you know, not the top tier guys, but as we went down in honorable mentions, you start to get in those numbers at 294, right? That's incredible. Right, he's one of those guys. Ahmed, I turned on the film and I went, "Wait, this is—he looks like a defensive end. Are we sure he's a defensive tackle?" Like, if you told me, "Oh, he's six four, two seventy five, and he plays the end," I would go, "Yeah, okay." But then you look at it and you go, "Man, whoa, whoa, he's pretty dense. Damn, those are some legs. Whoa, he's two ninety four, right? Great legs. Love his upper body and arms. Rocked up, long arms, right? Guy that again." Got to watch the film and ask yourself, he was playing out of position. Like we talked about with Byron Murphy, right, a little bit. Uh, a ro 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 was playing nose tackle. Yeah. Okay? At 294, playing nose tackle. They were asking him to do the most physically, be the most physical strong guy on our defense against ACC offensive linemen, and he was incredible at it. Now, that's not what he's going to be in the NFL. He's a three technique, right? But what that does show you is he has the pure power and incredible power for the coaching staff at Clemson who's seen Dexter Lawrence and those type of guys go, you could play nose tackle like Dexter Lawrence even though he outweighs you by 50 pounds, right? He is really good. I mean, moves really well. You got to watch some tape here now because he does not get – if you just watch some games, you're going to go, well, damn, I mean, all he did was hold the guy up all game. I didn't really get to see much. Or I only got to saw one or two plays of him doing something where they just unleashed him, right? But as you start to watch and you continue to watch, you start to see some of those plays. And then you go, holy shit, he's really quick. And – he gives guards, when he's given the green light to pass rush a guard or that, he gives them big issues and pass protection, right? He's got the great power we talk about, mm -hmm. but he's got the quicks to win that way, and he plays them off each other because there's not a lot of moves in his game. He's a little bit like we talk about with Darius Robinson. It's kind of just like, I'm here and I'm going to overpower you, right? And he does the same thing. So he gets you a little like this, and then he jams his arms in you. Or he acts like he might come in and bull rush you, and then he beats you with the quicks. But, like, the quicks are quick as hell, right, for 294. And he moves people backwards on the regular off the ball. When he gets allowed to just explode and they go, hey, don't hold the guy up, don't two-gap, I mean, on contact, the guy blocking him goes backwards every time, right? He's got incredible, like a Darius Robinson, that first-step explosion and his ability to shoot his hands and hit you with them, I thought were really impressive, right? You know, but, like, this is not just big, strong guy. Like He showed the ability to shoot some gaps and be disruptive and do that. Again, he wasn't always asked to do that, so you don't get to see it all the time. And that's where I kept going. You know, I started to get run out of page here because I was like, oh, man. I started to go, whoa, wait, he does do this. Oh, wait, oh, he did answer this question. Oh, no, like he's awesome at this, right? And uh, really impressive. One of the surprises of the position sure. for me, for sure. Late to football. Didn't start playing football until his junior year of high school. Uh, emigrated from Nigeria to Michigan when he was eight years old. How did he get out of the state of Michigan? Went to Clemson for five years. Became a starter in 2021 after Brian Breesey was injured there. So didn't play as much because he was behind some yeah. of those guys guys like Bracey, who was a, a first rounder last year, right? He was at the end of the yeah, first round. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Saints. Yeah, to the Saints. That's right. So a row, 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 
uh, according to NFL.com, can get distracted by individual battles sometimes. Need to keep his focus trained on pursuing the ball, yep. making positive plays. But he does have that nasty streak in him. And I, I looked at for like big plays. Uh, one against Notre Dame, it was like fourth down and 10, end of the game, minute to go. Uh, did he step up? Overpowered the guard, Pat Coogan, who, who like held him, but he still was able to overpower him and got to Sam Hartman, affected the throw, and basically ended that game uh, for Clemson. And so it's just like the big moments. He's got that nasty streak. I kind of like his attitude. He definitely has the attitude, right? He's definitely got the nastiness in him for sure. You know, one of the things I wrote at the end, I wrote, you know, I, I bet you Joe Walt was impressed with this kid. Mm. Joe Walt got matched him against him and couldn't move him one inch, right? Not to say he dominated Joe Walt, but it was like, wait, here's your top seven pick of the draft here's this kid he's not outclassed by joe wall at in any way at any way at all let alone the rest of that o-line which is pretty good in there in notre dame he had moments of whooping their ass a little bit you know like our guy at duke did um so yeah you know 29 benches of the bench mm. with 34 inch arms i think that explains a little bit right the get off the length in the arms like i said he moves people backwards right you know, he can be disruptive. His anchor versus double teams is insanely good for his size. Again, he anchors at 294 like I see guys that are 345 sometimes. I go, well, it, it's, it's, he's immovable, right? Um, he's not as loose and as pliable as the top guys. He's so a little I'm, more I'm stiff. searching for why he is not in Tier 2 for you. Like, yeah, what are the, yeah, I what think are it's the limitations? Not, I, I think it's loose and pliability. A little of the out of position, not totally sure exactly what he is. And then you alluded to this, and, or I, you quoted somebody because, you know, I, I wrote, he doesn't have the same instincts and eyes into the backfield as the top guys have. Mm -hmm. He definitely will get into, wait, I'm going to, you hit me and I'm going to beat your ass. And it's like, no, no, the guy's running by you right now. <laughs> Don't worry, you can beat his ass next play. Make the tackle, right? Yeah. He definitely can get a little caught up in that. There's no doubt about that. You see that. So that to me is like the learning of the game, the out of the position, playing out of position, being a little stiff, not sure, not getting that evidence to go, wait, he gets to do this all the time. I got to see a ton of snaps. I know it. I'm for sure, right? The other guys, you get to see them at one spot and know for sure at a lot of the time. So there was a little of that. He was a guy that I actually wrote reminded me of Keon White a little bit. That 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 is who he reminded me of. But, you know, the – Played out of position, one-on-one -on -one pass rush. He is awesome. Bull rush is great, right? He's got good quicks too. Really good football player. I, I wrote twenty-eight to forty-eight. I know that's high. I know it is. I mean, I understand that, but so he could be a steal. I mean, it, I look at him and just go, "Wow!" You describe yeah. them exactly how your tier is is labeled. Physical needs molding here, yeah. but yeah. you feel like once he gets that, and he's late to football, so it's just like he'll learn some hand fighting, yeah. right? You know, doesn't gets, always happen. Gets like, the hunk, yeah, it doesn't always doesn't happen. Doesn't always happen. Right. Doesn't always all come together. No, no. Gets to hunker down at one position a little bit yeah. and learn that nuance instead of like, wait, coach, I play this position, but wait, you want me to do this and learn this? Oh, all right, wait, I'm just getting good at this. Oh, wait, no, it's third down. Now you want me to go back to my position that's good? Oh, wait, it's a big play. Now I need to go back to the other position that's good? Oh, you need – so that's that's hard, right, for a young guy that hasn't played football. Yep. We'll see. My money – would be on, from what I see on film, as far as intensity, physicality, importance of the game, that he's going to be a guy that's going to thrive in the environment. Yeah. So we'll see where it goes. That's why he is in your top five, which we have now completed. Morgan's got the graphic ready to go. They've looked great this year, Morgan. Well done separating the tiers and the different players. Way to go, top Morgan. Five. Byron Murphy, Darius Robinson in tier one. A lot uh, of orange. There's only orange. one orange that counts, though. It's burn orange at the top. Yeah, that might be surprising, though. Some people thought you might have a couple of burn orange in there. We talked about Devondre Sweat yep. a little bit off the top here. Yeah. Um, uh, Ted J. Rowland says, last year a defensive tackle was selected in the top 10 of the draft. What is the highest spot? You can see this year a DT being selected. So ultimate highest ceiling. Yeah. You said kind of 12 to what? Yeah, 12, 12 to, to 20, 20 for 25 Murphy. for Murphy. Like, what's the absolute highest? Is I, 12 the highest? I think that's kind of where I would see it going. You know, Denver at 12, which I don't expect them to do that, but mm – -hmm. Yeah, that's where I at least can see a possibility of it. Okay. Right? D hey, Jalen Carter last year, let, let's let's not get this and forget about this. Jalen Carter was the number one player in the draft. 
like Jalen Carter, if he doesn't get in the car racing thing and all mm-hmm, of that, mm-hmm. is going to be the number one pick in the draft last year. Everybody has to realize that. He was very special. Like we said at the top of the show, it was week three, and I was going, I think he's the best defensive tackle in football already, right? So that's different. There's nobody like that this year, right? Uh, but, yeah, I think generally that's kind of where I look at it. 12, 14, 15, somewhere in there it starts the, the, the Byron Murphy draft. But there's some depth because you also have some honorable mentions kind of in your Robin Hood some or just the ones. guys that have just, just missed the cut here who were in consideration, I'm sure, at some point yeah. to being in your top five. Definitely. Um, let's start with uh, Ohio State, the Ohio State University. Five, I kind of make a top five as I go along, right? Yeah. So I'm always like doing it. If I've watched 10, I write it down on a piece of paper when I get done with the first 10 and go, okay, here would be my top three or four from this group for sure, right? So I kind of keep a running list. The first guy, Mike Hall from Ohio State. I liked him a lot. Damn, right? I mean, he's kind of a, a surprising guy, I think, when you, you, you kind of break him down. Yeah. Um, there was a play against Maryland I was watching where yeah. he was like a man possessed. He was just like came in there, like bowl, like knocked over the center and then went over and three steps later, like knocked over Talia Tungavailoa, the quarterback. He there, just, like, there was a time where I thought where I was like, is this guy going to be in my top five, right? Is he going to be? I mean, he was fringe for sure. 6'3", 290, 33 and a half inch arms, right? You know, like you're saying, bouncing off people, loose, bendable, can mm-hmm. win in the awkward positions that we talk about, right? Right, plays hard, great motor, right? Total, one of my favorite as far as disregard for his body. Hmm. Like you were talking about there, you kind of em- you emphasize that. Yeah. You know, I'm big into that. You know, again, life's not going to be perfect in the NFL. You're going to be getting blocked and be in a weird position. It's going to be third and two, and Derrick Henry's coming up the middle. Are you going to go out there and put your body on the line to make the tackle? Or are you going to kind of go, oh, that's going to hurt. He's going to just have to get the first down, and I'll, maybe I can make a play next play. There might not be a next play. Mm-hmm. Next play, that could have been a touchdown now that you didn't dive in front of, right? Yeah. Who knows? So I'm big into that. I really am. Uh, takes on double teams well. Has I talked about the the – uh, the balance is incredible, right? Not as not in the ground ever, right? That's big too. You can't be on the ground and be a defensive tackle. If you're on the ground as a defensive tackle, right? One, you're an injury liability. Two, you're probably going to trip somebody else on your defense who's trying to make the tackle on the guy on the ball. Nobody wants the guy on the ground, right? There's now an area voided that the coach can't like make up for. So that never happens, right? You know, gets knocked around like you talked about and still holds his ground. Incredible eyes in the backfield. Like incredible, right? He might not have a lot of wow plays, but the best thing he does is he doesn't have any bad plays. That's Mm. the thing I wrote. You know, a very consistent, reliable player. You know what you're getting. Has the ability to be a real pain in the ass as a pass rusher in the NFL. Has bend, has good quicks, and good power. I I really like the kid. The, the more I watch them, the more I really liked, started to like him. Right? Starting three technique in the NFL, never bad play. Under the radar, really good. And I wrote 35 to 55, 40 to 60 as far as the range I see him going in. He also played in the bowl game against uh, Missouri. I like that. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. He just, I mean, he, just, he seems slippery out there too at right. times, right? And he can be unblocked. Yes. And like, they don't even get a finger on him. Yeah. He's just quick and slippery. Definitely. That's where, you know, again, the versatility, three technique, five technique, you know, hey, line up out here, but shoot inside and now become, you're relining up a DN, now shoot inside and we're going to kind of have you play deep tackle, but do that. I think he could do all of that. I think he could do it at a really high level. Yeah, he was one of my... Uh, you know, pleasant surprises of the of the process. Now, this next guy would have been in your top five if his father had not done something to you <laughs> in the NFL. So, let, let's do we have that picture here, guys? Uh, Gabby and Kristen back there. Do we have? Um, the picture of our next person here, uh, he is a Michigan Wolverine player who I think should have been in the top five automatically based <laughs> on that. So here's Chris Jenkins, senior. Um, that that looks that like is, an uncomfortable position, and it was it for was. you there and then thereafter. I, I think I've already been hit. I think I've already – this damage has been done. I honestly think Thomas Davis is bouncing off of me right there, right? I think he's already hit me, and he's actually bouncing off. So this is the moment that you basically said goodbye to your spleen. This was the moment for sure, right? That's why I'm making that weird face because I think I've, I've – like I said, I threw the ball away. I was throwing the ball away. I knew Thomas Davis was coming. Yeah. I was going to kind of throw and right and turn my shoulder and take the hit but as I got extended to throw the ball Jenkins got me from behind and I ended up getting even more stretched out to where yeah I'm I'm pretty sure this is post hit Thomas Davis has hit me and now is bouncing off of me oh yeah right you know what I mean 
Uh, and that's why my face is like, oh, something got smushed in there. Yeah. And then the next play in the huddle, I was literally like, yeah, because I couldn't. I had like the wind knocked out of me times 20. And the next play, I had Michael Clayton open on third down for like a 20 yard gain. And it's like my abdomen was in spasm or something. I threw it like 12 yards and yeah. skipped it to him. Like I couldn't like get my body to lean up and like, yeah. ex- like extend. Uh, yeah, that was. I the, mean, as many times as you like tell that story and talk about it, it still is crazy to, it's to crazy. hear it, yeah. how it just it happened. And, yeah. Um, thank God you're here. And thank you're God to, I'm here. To, to rate his, uh, his Chris Jenkins' son not in your top five. I, I, let me say this. I told you this before the, the show. This was the first time personal bias crept into my brain the whole draft right because <laughs> yeah. i like the kids so i first off have so much respect for his dad i don't care that he took my spleen out or yeah. not whatever to be he clear should've. personal bias you almost put him in your top five because you liked him so i much. like him so much yeah i got tremendous respect for the dad the dad is like really one of those guys we talk about a lot who's a great player that we all forget about because he wasn't in the hall of fame or not on a super bowl team where mm-hmm. i go he was like one of the best interior d lineman in football for a few years in a row right but yeah jenkins is an amazing human being Jenkins I loved being around Chris Jenkins jr right he is phenomenal that way but and again certainly a top 50 pick in the draft definitely but just no to me didn't merit a first round status right it's a lot of good a lot of good right it's consistent good I don't know if there's ever any great or wow right no, so that's what I – I think you're getting, again, a guy that's very safe as far as the draft is concerned. Sure. The floor is high. I just don't know if I think the ceiling is incredibly high. We'll see where it goes. His combine numbers are more athletic than what you see on film at times, right? And we'll see. Maybe the NFL unlocks him a little bit or he takes it up to a new level. Really like the guy, though. And, again, three technique, five technique, can play strong side defense and going to be able to do all that type of stuff. He's bendable. He's flexible. Like we talk about, the bad plays, right? They're really not bad. They're not. It's just stalemates, right? So – um, but as far as the wow factor, maybe not on par with some of the you know top guys of the draft. Yeah, I'd agree with that. He's he's kind of hard to evaluate too because Michigan played with such a rotation on defense this year. Is that they, all these guys were fresh most of the game? The most snaps he played in the game was forty against I was Ala- say, Alabama. I was gonna say. Um, yeah. And I watched that game against Alabama. And he, he he held his ground, shed blockers did really well. And what I noticed again from watching that game is Alabama holds. I was like, they hold. <laughs> they all hold. I said that before, and I think they did it again. They are cheaters. Um, so Chris Jenkins in your others receiving votes yep. category. Now, this next guy got a, has gotten a lot of love at the Combine. I think I gave him the Big Butt Award. Uh, Braden Fisk got a, out of Florida State. Um, he's like a, a late riser. Doesn't have the prototypical size and arm length that you'd want. In fact, it's a bad. It's a negative. He's like in the third percentile for arms, fifth percentile for for wingspan but you wanted to give him some love here and your honorable mention i did because i mean one you said it i mean there's some athletic attributes that need to be brought up here Uh, i mean when you just like if you talk about like whoa who's that guy that just got off the ball whoa that was a disruptive play like brandon braden fisk would be up there with some of the top guys in the draft the problem is like we always talk about the bad is bad here Mm. right the bad is almost sometimes like it's almost like cartoon bad where you're like, whoa, they're like taking him on a ride down the field and he's eight yards down the field now, right? Now, he throws his body around, he plays hard, right? But I think the reason I can't make him a top five DT uh, is, yeah, the inconsistency that way. I mean, you saw it. I mean, again, you don't need to watch much to go, whoa, wait, that guy just got a hold of him and he's literally six yards downfield. Or, whoa, it's a yeah. double team and he's on skates, right? All right, that's going to scare people. He's one of these guys too. It's like he's six four. He's two ninety two. He ran a four seven eight. He ran a one six eight ten. That's all like top notch. I don't think you can can consistently play him at D tackle in the NFL. At least not at first, mm. right? Maybe you play him on. Maybe you play him at five technique. Yeah. Maybe you'll play him at strong side DN. He is so athletic that I think he could play literally three four outside linebacker. Like he could do that. Mm. I would be like he'll be fine. He'll be fine. I mean, he's he's not there there's lesser ones out there, you know. So that that's the problem. Um but he is like his good plays are a, 
uh, they're a lot of fun to watch. That's and he's as yeah. explosive and, and as crafty as it gets as far as just being disruptive at times. So I, I put here, like, his super part, you're like, you're right. Like, you just seem to get dominated sometimes on double teams in the run game, single blocks. But, like, his, his superpower is almost like the ability to get through tight spaces, yes. like find his way. He's not going to overpower. Get skinny, get sideways. Exactly. And you go, whoa, he got through. Right. And he has closing speed. So, like, in the ACC championship game versus Louisville, he played really, really well. Right. And when he has a beat on the quarterback, like, he has a good – he like, all the other defensive tackles, you're like, well, that quarterback's going to pull away. Yeah, yeah. It's no, like he, he'll, he'll he can, chase, him, chase him down. For sure. Yeah, or make him run him the sideline to where they got to throw the ball away. The, right? If he can get in the proper position, it's like then he can make some plays. Definitely. But it's like how often can he get in those? I feel like early on in the NFL, because he's top-heavy, right, he doesn't have great legs. He's kind of around the belly heavy, like that kind of look, right? Right, he's got that, you know – little Fred Flintstone-ish type of yeah. like body and even running style and how he runs, right? Um, but, yeah, it's the, it's the top-heavy, getting off, off balance. You said it, double teams, wrestling matches. They're not his best things. I think when he gets to the NFL, you got to play him, you know, strong side defense to end on first and second down. Let him be that guy out there, right? Maybe he can work on his anchor, get better at some of those things, hand fighting, all that as far as a D tackle. And then maybe on passing situations, you move him inside, right? I think that's generally how I would, would look at it, right? But there's no way defensive line coaches in the NFL are going to watch Braden Frisk and go, I want him to start a three technique, right? Yeah. I promise you if you do that, the, the team they're playing is going to run for 200 yards running right at that three technique, right? Yeah. So that's where he's got some work. Uh, but, damn, there's some stuff you like about the explosive athlete. Opposite category, you got Tavondre Sweat from Texas, who you did, who you don't have in your top five, nope. but you do want to give some love to. And let me just say this right away because I did see some questions on this uh, when you tweeted out that you were going to talk about defensive tackles. Right. He was arrested for a DWI in Austin on Sunday afternoon. Uh, Daniel Hinshaw 5 wants to know, like, what round would you draft Tavondre Sweat after his alleged DWI? And so these are questions that are that are tough to answer, but your your rating of him here is is disassociated from anything, anything yes, off the field. Yes, that's right. Right, right. I mean, that's going to hurt him. Let's just let's just be sure here. Yeah. Like, you know, getting a DWI three weeks before a draft, right? When, like, it's part of the litmus test. Like, don't screw up during this time of the year, right? Yeah. No, no, we're, we're watching you. Can we trust you? Can we invest money into you long term, right? Are you going to do the little things to be a pro? Between this and then him not weighing in at the senior bowl, Right. Those are two things that are everyone's going to go, oh, gosh, uh, how serious he is about his game, right? Yeah. He is a gigantic human being, right? What Gig are the actual numbers on him? Is it Here, 360? It's 366. Is it? Six, four and a half, 366, 33 and a quarter inch arms, right? Five, two, seven, 40, one, eight in the 10, which is still, those are good numbers for that size, right? But, yeah. you know, it's, I guess when I turned on the film, and I heard Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, right? You just think, okay, well, I'm going to see something pretty special here, right? This guy, I'd heard a lot about him. I was thinking it was going to be Vita Vea, Sexy Dexy, right? Jordan Davis, who we talked about. It, it's not that. And that's why he's not in the first round conversation. Those guys were elite athletes to go along with being almost as big as Devondre Sweat, right? They were probably 345, right? He's 366, but they were different that way. This is not an elite athlete that way. This is more of your true, what we started the show off, traditional, we want a nose tackle. You sit here, you don't let anybody move you for 16 weeks in a row. Just stop the run, right? He's that guy. That's who he is, right? So, but you know, there's things that you want from him a little bit more, right? I'll go into like, a, you know, again, not to say he's Mozzie Smith, but there's things about the Mozzie Smith comparison since his name came up today yeah. where you'd go, yeah, there's plays where you'd go, I just, can you, I, I want a little more. Can you throw that guy off you? You're, yeah. you're big and strong. You shouldn't just let him block you like that. The, right? the, you yeah. shouldn't be content being blocked right now. The frustrating thing is that there are some times, like against Oklahoma, like this center, like he was like dominating him and made the center. It was like man amongst boys there. I was like, wow, that's, that's impressive. Impressive. They're just not There's a lot few of and far that. between. Yeah. Right. Exactly right. Seems kind of slow it's, getting off the ball, stands right up. That's one, one of the just things I just write. I read the movement of the player. There's no urgency or violence in the game. Yes. Right. There's got to be some of that. I didn't see anger. I didn't see intensity that way. Right. You know, he pushes guards, but it's not like, wow. Right. His get off is just, you know, average, I thought. You know, and then add that to not violent, strong hands, right? There's just not a lot of domination that goes on there. Not that he loses a lot, 
but you just go, man, you're, I'd like a little more domination for what you have against this guy that you're, that's blocking you. Right. But a, a true space eater, right. I wrote not in the same stratosphere as sexy Dexy or Vita Vey or Jordan Davis, right. You know, uh, sweat is an okay mover, but doesn't have the twitch and explosion. Those guys have too many plays where he's content being blocked, not nasty, no fight, even with double teams, you know, gets moved a little too easily at times. Yeah. Right. That's where, uh, again, I'm going, wait, Wait, this is the defensive player of the year, and the guy over here has made 75 plays and nobody can move him in Byron Murphy, and he didn't get defensive player of the year? I don't understand that, right? He is loose and pliable. He can definitely do some two-gapping, as we know, right? He is the typical guy. Is the NFL environment going to bring his level of intensity mm. and focus and all that up, or is he going to melt away? That's where it's going to be really interesting to see, right? But, you know, there's, like you said, I wrote at the end, there's pieces where you go, whoa, that's really good. But then you watch another game and you go, I, I didn't see that the whole game. Where, where did that four plays from the Oklahoma game go? Here yeah. we are. It's Iowa State. It's like it's nobody. There's nothing going on. What's going on? How is that be, right? So that's going to be the big question about him going on. And I think then you add the DWI and the weight concerns a little bit. Right. I think like Tavondre Sweat, I think before the DWI, I would have I wrote down – 50 to 70 or 55 to 75, I think probably now you're talking about early fourth round, somewhere mm -hmm. in there. I think wow. he falls out of the first two days of the draft. Because it, just the nature of, of his, who he is and kind of more nose tackle, he's only going to affect a game like right in the middle of the field. And, he's the and, old school thought, which is right with this one. And so you've got to die. If you're going to only affect the game in that small of a circle, exactly you really right. have to dominate the game in that small circle. Hey, exactly. It seem like exactly he does right. That. Exactly right. Like th those other guys, that's where, we, like, you know, I think they missed out. Everyone just thought, oh, they'll just dominate in that game in a circle. And not that I'm patting myself on the back or whatever. I think some missed or whatever. It's just that, no, no, they had more, right? I mean, they can rush the passer. They're athletic. They can shoot a gap every now yeah. and then, do all that, let alone be dominant in that little box against double teams and all that. No, you don't see that. And, uh, you know, hopefully he can get all things straight in his life and with that uh, and, and still have a, a successful NFL career. One more name that you yeah. want to throw in there uh, from you Oregon. Wanted you well, wanted This Brandon, is a you. No, this is just me being on Twitter too much. Uh, Brandon <laughs> Dolrus from Oregon. There was this tweet from Jim Nagy who runs the Senior Bowl yeah. there, and he said that based off what teams are telling us, Dolrus is a virtual day two lock because he's got potential to eventually be a double-digit sack guy. And he looked pretty good at the uh, the Senior Bowl and those practices, one-on-one -on -one drills, too. What what did the tape tell you? Day two lock, for sure. I would agree with that. He's a little bit like the Braden Fisk in conversation we just had, mm. right? Where you go, wait, for his size, and let me pull him up, right? You know, because he's... What is it? Doorless? What did doorless, I say? yeah. Oh, doorless. Doorless. Brandon he's, Doorless. He's... One of those guys, for whatever reason, that's listed as a defensive end, even though he plays more D tackle, right? Um, and 6'3, 283, I mean, he's extremely explosive and athletic for that, right? He moves well. Yeah. The thing will be like this it's a little bit of he's not a wow edge pass rusher, right? He's a wow inside edge, inside rusher. But not a wow edge rusher mm -hmm. to where I go, oh wow. I mean, his you let him wind up offside and him yeah. like that. No, no. And then on the inside, even though he's a wow pass rusher in there and he is an athletic mover, it, it, you wouldn't trust him against a run, right? That, that's going to be the thing. So he's going to be specific to where it's like, hey, maybe first and second down, we play him a defense end. Third down, we can move him inside. Or, you know, hey, we're not worried about him holding his ground against a run. We just want him to shoot a gap and, and cause chaos and maybe be like Michael Bennett from the Seattle Seahawks a few years ago, right? Maybe that's what he'll be, right, is yeah. that guy. But I couldn't say he's a top five D end or a top five D tackle. He's a little bit of a tweener that way. Like a Braden Fisk, I think you're going to have to worry about, hey, let's play him on the edge a little bit early on. And in certain situations, we'll play him inside as he gets better at double teams and anchors and stuff like that. But, damn, there's definitely some stuff. There's some good stuff. There yeah. is definitely some stuff. There were stuff. a couple of times I was like, is he just not fast enough? Is he getting tired? Does he not have a great motor at times? There were some times where I'm just like, you know, maybe Oregon's you know scoring too quick on offense, and these defensive guys are playing too many plays. I, he where. could be, um, he could, um, you know, what I would call like muscle up a little bit too. Mm -hmm. I, you know, that'd be one of the things I would look at. Again, you know, more times than not, when I look at these guys and go, oh, the body's not real 
hard and ripped yeah. up and muscular, you know what those guys usually do? They run out of stamina, Yeah. right? Byron Murphy came out of this womb small. Yeah. He never fucking runs out. I'm watching Michael Penix. It's play 67. He's still busting through the line of scrimmage, getting after Michael Penix, right? So, yeah, that's where... You know, I, I feel like maybe what you're talking about, because I saw that too, yeah, right? right. And, I, and I just, yeah, there's a little bit of a, gets worn down or lethargic at times, and you, yeah. you just want more that way. So that's it. Those that's are the, it. Those are the names to know for defensive tackle in 2024. Chris Sims thinks four, potentially four of those guys could go in the first round. I think at so. Most. Yeah. If the over-under was three and a half, would you I, say? You know, I haven't had conversations with anybody really about these deep tackles yet. Like I've told you in the past, usually this is... I don't call my friends going, hey, tell me about the D-tackles. Yeah. They want to hear me talk about the D-tackles, and then they get involved in the conversation. But they're not going to try to go, hey, Chris, you know who I really like? I really like this guy. i got to kind of state myself and show where I'm at, and then we talk. But I haven't had D-tackle conversations with any of my NFL friends yet. I'm interested to see the feedback I get here. It's an interesting spot because behind quarterback, it's like these the elite ones are getting paid a lot, like $25 million. Like that's more than any other – defensive spot yes i mean what's the top corner making right now 22 21 and jair alexander somewhere in there yeah. right yeah no i listen this is the, the way the nfl is right now and how multiple it is right chris jones can play dn nose tackle three technique five technique he can do it all that there's just there's no supplant supplanting or you know what you am know. i trying to say supplanting that <laughs> Uh, that's not right. That's not right. So. Well, you can't deny that. How about that? You can't There's deny no that. There's no denying it. And, There's no denying it. And, hey, I had this conversation with Florio today, too. Right? I mean, again, you get into the best teams in football. They got big people. They're good up front. Right? You talk about the Ravens. What do they got on both sides? Number one seed in the AFC. That's right. They got it all. Day. You talk about the Chiefs. They got it on both sides. No doubt about it. You talk about the 49ers or the Lions. They got it on both sides, right? Big people on both sides of the ball. Uh, it's imperative. And, you know, and I think, you know, we're, we're seeing the Philadelphia Eagles. Why do we say they're an all star team? Well, I don't know. They have a fucking never ending list of big people on both sides yeah. of the ball. So it's a very important part of the game, and I think it's yeah. going to show this year in the draft. And I think this is true, and I think we can do one more thing with this because I think this brings up a, a, a good question one from a Carmageddon thing. 4. One more thing uh, brought to you by uh, Colombo, streaming exclusively on Peacock. we got to make sure that's still true. Is yeah. Colombo still on Peacock? Yeah. We've been doing this joke for a while. We're going to double-check that. Go check Peacock. It probably is on there. Uh, Carmageddon 4 says, is a top-tier defensive tackle more important yes. than a corner? Yes. Especially in a zone scheme. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, it's uh, the top tier defensive tackle just has such an effect on the football game now on an every play basis. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, again, like the guys we've talked about today, first, second, third down, it doesn't matter. They're all there. You got to deal with them. And then mm -hmm. they're a pain in the ass in all things. Oh, we want to run the ball. Oh, damn, we got to block Jeffrey Simmons. Hey, we want to throw the ball. Damn, who are we going to get to block Jeffrey Simmons, right? I mean, it's, 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 they change game plans, right? Aaron Don there nobody playing man to man on the Rams when they won the Super Bowl. Why do you think they were so they played zone and they went let's just make the quarterback try to read the coverage and pat the ball and by the time he's getting ready to pat the ball, Aaron Donald will have him on the ground, right? You know, that, that's where it is and I think you know again I think we talked about it there. You talk about again the better teams in football, you know. You guys are probably one of the few teams that didn't have an elite D tackle play as far as like disruptors yeah. out of the top teams yeah, in the league. But Ali McNeil played really, He's really, really good. Well. Yeah. He's a stout but guy. You got a lot of good there, but not yeah. like an elite. You know what I mean? So yeah, uh, it's um, it, it's a it's a big time position of, of importance right now. A couple other streaming services also have Columbo. Uh, Pete's how dare research he's showed us? us so far, but Peacock is the only one where you can stream all ten seasons, so it's all in one uh, spot. So he's so really all ours. Okay, he's, he's still the all best right. place to be, and yeah. it's where you can get Chris Sims unbuttoned. Yep. and you can watch PFT live in the morning, and whenever you get those clips on there. And there's a lot of good stuff on Peacock. I think our, our Chris Sims on Button is going to be airing right after PFT by streaming on Peacock for the whole week, right? So it is? Be, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Dan yeah. Patrick took no the week Dan, off. So it's all Chris Sims on Button. Wow. I hope you did good in those last shows. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> if I had known that, I would have worn a shirt and tie. <laughs> oh, well. All right, everybody. I hope everybody enjoyed the D tackle ranks. Great class. I mean, again. Uh, we got some positions in this draft that are deep for sure, and some real players. Uh, send in the questions. You know, we got a few more position uh, groups to rank, go through. 
I think we've hit the main ones. We have. You know, I don't think we're talking about any first round safeties or linebackers this year in the draft. No running backs in the first round this year. Tight ends. We only got really one we're talking about I here. I think we have one player who we haven't talked to, Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers. Who could go in the first That's round. That's the only we guy haven't we haven't about hit about so on yet, yeah. right? So I'm, I'm definitely going to start watching some of that in these other position groups and long as hitting some other miscellaneous guys. Keep sending them the questions. We know we, we love the involvement. Uh, everybody be good. We'll be here. You're, you're here Wednesday? I'm here, here Wednesday. Here? All right, yeah, good. I All right. So. He's yeah. uh, Amon's working this week. Great. Day good to, to hear it. Yeah. All right, everybody. Be good. Have a next uh, good next few days. Peace out, homies. Clap it Clap up. Clap it up. Yo, yo, homies, what's up? I know it's the off-season, but it's never the off-season on Chris Sims Unbutton. Me and Ahmed Fareed are going to be here for it all. You know we got free agency. We're going to break it all down. The draft, the rankings of positions, of course, we're going to unpack it all. Hit subscribe, get to my free agency reactions, 2024 draft rankings, and more. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, homies. See you soon.